Hello, how are you today? In our Google Meet the other day, you guys said you wanted me to read you guys some books. So I thought I would film a book. This is The Lemonade War. If you wanted me to read The Midnight Rider, that'll be on my other video. So I thought I'd start today, read like a chapter, and then come back at you in another video. So here we go. The Lemonade War by Jacqueline Davies. Oh look, there's a table of contents. Can you see it? Can you see the chapter titles? Does it make you wonder what's gonna happen in this book by looking at some of the titles? Ooh, let's find out. First chapter is called Slump. Oh, it starts off with a definition. It's a slump noun, a drop in the activity of a business or the economy. Evan lay on his back in the dark, throwing the baseball up in a straight line and catching it in his bare hands. Thwap, thwap. The ball made a satisfying sound as it slapped his palm. His legs flopped in a V. His arms stretched up to the ceiling, and the thought of it and the thought that if he missed, he'd probably break his nose made the game just interesting enough to keep going. On the floor above, he heard footsteps, his mother's, and then a long, loud, scraping, groaning noise. He stopped throwing a ball to listen. His mother was dragging something heavy across the kitchen floor, probably the broken air conditioner. A week ago, right at the beginning of the heat wave, the air conditioner in his mother's attic office had broken. The man from Sears had installed a brand new one, but left the old one sitting right in the middle of the kitchen floor. The Truskies had been walking around it all week. Scrape! Evan stood up. His mom was strong, but this was a two-person job. Hopefully she wouldn't ask him why he was hiding in the dark basement. And hopefully Jesse wouldn't be in the kitchen at all. He'd been avoiding her for two days now, and it was getting harder by the minute. The house just wasn't that big. Anybody wonder who Jesse is and why he's avoiding her? Evan had his hand on the railing when the scraping noise stopped. He heard footsteps fading to silence. She'd given up. Probably the heat, he thought. It was that kind of weather, giving up kind of weather. He went back to lying on the floor. Thwap, thwap. Then he heard the basement door open. Evan caught the ball and froze. Evan? Jesse's voice sounded echoey in the darkness. Evan, you down there? Evan held his breath. He lay completely still. The only thing that moved was the pins and needles prickling in his fingers. He heard the door start to close. Long breath out. But then it scraped and opened again. I'm sorry, it stopped and opened again. Footsteps on the carpeted stairs. A black outline of Jessie standing on the bottom step with daylight squirting all around her. Evan didn't move a muscle. Evan, is that you? Jessie took one short step into the basement. Is that? She inched her way toward him, then kicked him with her bare foot. Hey, watch it, would you? said Evan, swatting her leg. He suddenly felt stupid lying there in the dark. Did you figure out who Jessie is? Did you figure out why he didn't want to see her? Think maybe there's a little bit of sibling issues going on there? I thought you were sleeping bags, she said. I couldn't see. What are you doing down here? How come the lights are off? It's too hot with the lights on, he said. He talked in a flat voice, trying to sound like the most boring person on the whole planet. If he kept it up, Jesse might just leave him alone. Mom's back in her office, said Jesse, lying down on the couch. Working. She groaned as she said the word. Evan didn't say anything. He went back to throwing the ball. Straight up, straight down. Maybe silence would get Jesse to leave. He was starting to feel words piling up inside him, crowding his legs, forcing out all the air. It was like having a chest full of bats, beating their wings, fighting to get out. She tried to move the air conditioner, but it's too heavy, said Jesse. Evan tightened up his lips. Go away, he thought. Go away before I say something mean. It's going to be hot all week, he, Jesse continued, in the 90s, all the way up to Labor Day. Thwap, 
thwack. So what do you want to do, Jessie asked. Scream, thought Evan. Jessie never got it when you were giving her the big freeze. She just went right on acting as if everything were great. It made it really hard to tell her to bug off without telling her to bug off. Whatever Evan did, he felt bad. So what do you want to do? Jessie asked again, nudging him with her foot. It was a direct question. Evan had to answer it or explain why he wouldn't. And he couldn't get into that. It was too, too complicated, too hurtful. Huh? So what do you want to do? She asked for the third time. Doing it, said Evan. Nah, come on, for real. For real, he said. We could ride our bikes to the 7-Eleven, she said. No money, he said. You just got $10 from Grandma for your birthday. Spend it, said Evan. On what? Stuff. Evan said. Well, I've got... Well... Jessie's voice dribbled down to nothing. Evan stopped throwing the ball and looked at her. What? Jessie pulled her legs to her chest. Nothing, she said. Right, said Evan. He knew that Jessie had money. Jessie always had money scrolled away in her lockbox. But that didn't mean she was going to share it. Evan went back to shooting the baseball. I'm sorry, went back to throwing the baseball. He felt a tiny flame of anger shoot up and lick his face. Thwack. Thwack. We could build a fort in the woods, said Jessie. Too hot. We could play Stratego. Too boring. We could build a track and raise marbles. Too stupid. A thin spider web of sweat draped itself over his forehead, spreading into his hair. With every throw, he told himself, it's not her fault. But he could feel his anger growing. He started popping his elbow to put a, a little more juice in the ball. It was flying a good four feet into the air every time. Straight up, straight down. Pop, thwack. Pop, thwack. The bats in his chest were going nuts. Do you wonder why that is? And bats in his chest, figure of language. What is the matter with you, asked Jessie. You've been so weird the last couple of days. Oh man, here they come. I just don't want to play a dumb game like Stratego, he said. You like Stratego. I only picked that because it's your favorite game. I was being nice, in case you hadn't noticed. Look, there are only six days left of summer, and I'm not going to waste them playing a dumb game. Evan felt his heartbeat shoot up. Part of him wanted to stuff a sock in his mouth, and part of him wanted to deck his sister. It's a stupid game, and it's for babies, and I don't want to play a stupid baby game. Pop, thwack, pop, thwack. Why are you being so mean? Evan knew he was being mean, and he hated being mean, especially to her. But he couldn't help it. He was so angry and so humiliated and so full of bats. There was nothing else he could be, except alone. And she'd taken even that away from him. You're the genius, he said. You figure it out. All right, wait, why is he embarrassed and humiliated? Good, that would shut her up, for once. Evan watched the ball fly in the air. Is this because of the letter, Jessie asked? Crack. Evan had taken his eyes off the ball for one second, just for one second, and the ball came crashing down on his nose. Crud, oh crud! He curled over onto his side, grabbing his nose with both hands. There was a blinding, blooming pain right behind his eyes that was quickly spreading to the outer edges of his skull. Can you picture that? Can you feel it? Do you want some ice, he heard Jessie ask in a calm voice. What do you think? He shouted. Yeah? She stood up. No, I don't want any stupid ice. The pain was starting to go away, like a humongous wave that crashes with a lot of noise and spray, but then slowly fizzles away into nothing. Evan rolled to a sitting position and took his hands away from his nose. With his thumb and index finger, he started to pinch the bridge. Was it still in a straight line? Jessie peered at his face in the dim light. You're not bleeding, she said. Yeah, well, it hurts, he said, a lot. It's not broken, she said. You don't know that, he said. You don't know everything, you know. You think you do, but you don't. It's not even swollen. You're making a big deal out of nothing. Evan held his nose with one hand and hit his sister's knee with the other. Then he picked up the baseball and struggled to his feet. Leave me alone. 
I came down here to get away from you, and you just had to follow. You ruin everything. You ruined my summer, and now you're going to ruin school. I hate you. When he got to the bottom of the steps, he threw the baseball down in disgust. Thud. And that's the end of our chapter. Um, okay, so I don't know about you, but I have questions. Why does he seem so resentful of her? Why is he calling her a genius and a smarty pants and telling her to figure it out and things like that? And what is going on with him? Just in general. Why does he seem so miserable? So we maybe will figure that out in chapter two. But for now, on to here. Have a good rest of your day. If you want, check out the video on Midnight Rider if you haven't heard that one already. Talk to you later. Bye.